Hi, welcome back to Furious Fiction. We've got a great treat in store yeah. for you today. We have uh, Robert Olmsted, one of the one of the greatest writers in America. Uh, he's the author of Cold Black Horse. He's the author of The Coldest Night. And Robert, welcome welcome to Furious Fiction. Thank you. We, Thank we, I, I got to tell you a little story. I was in New Orleans a couple of years ago, and I was at this little independent bookstore, and I talking to the proprietor, and I said, well, give me some recommendations of books. And he picks up Cold Black Horse, and he said, you got to read this, if nothing else, just for the language. Uh, and he was absolutely mm. right. It was, it was wonderful. Uh, and I, I've enjoyed The Coldest Night, too, which is a uh, kind of some Korean War uh, uh, large part of it, Cold Black Horse for Civil War. And I may have dreamed this, but do, do you have have something else you're working on now that's a, a kind of a trilogy or, or is this is this uh, something else coming next well the the coldest night is the third book okay mm -hmm. um, it was uh, cold black horse far bright star ah, and then the coldest yes. night okay and Okay. That's yes. about 15 years worth of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what Mark said about the language, it's, it's astonishing. It's very poetic, very beautiful, hard to control that, but just exquisite. Every word where it should be and shined to a high gloss. I, I want to talk uh, about. I, I, I'll be happy to talk to you folks anytime. <laughs> <laughs> right. I want to talk about about coldest night a little bit because uh, I, I just you know it's interesting. I, I don't, I've never read much about or much fiction about the Korean War, and so just some of the descriptions of you know the fighting on the frozen reservoir uh, oh. was all you know pretty amazing. Uh, I mean, did you? I assume you had to do a lot of research. I mean, I don't think you're old enough to have been in the Korean War, so. Uh, uh, but uh, but that that. That was just really remarkable. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, a lot of research. Um, uh, had a very uh, generous uh, primary source, uh, 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 an old older gentleman who actually experienced quite a bit of that. But um, on the whole, uh, the literature of the Korean War, fiction or history, I mean, I'm not really sure it fills a shelf. There just isn't that much. That's, right. that's really no, true. Right. You, here's The Coldest Night, and then Toni Morrison has done, it's not really about the Korean War, it's a Korean War veteran, but her new novel, Home. But it's, it's interesting how that war, that period, is being very much, I think, reassessed it's it's very interesting to us but I'm interested in the way that you write about the experience of war and what it does to people once they're home I mean I think that's that could not be more topical yeah I I worry I, I, I worry that we've settled on two or three narratives and um, uh, returning veterans they they sort of have to fit into one of those narratives and if they don't they 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 really quite don't get their story told. You mean like the vet has to either be crazy or haunted or uh, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 or uh, stoic yes. or or post post trauma mm -hmm. and it's kind of kind of an either or and um, um, another uh, well and, and then there's sort of a and then there's sort of a swerve to redemption at the end and, yeah uh, right. Which makes yeah. us all feel better about you yeah. know, having yeah. sent them to war in the first place. Yeah, um, I remember talking to uh, talking to my friend, and uh, when he mustered out, um, he was he felt himself to be returning home too quickly, and uh, he got off the train and started hitchhiking. Mm. And um, he told me about how he passed through so many towns, and he was picked up by so many people. Who literally had no knowledge that that a war was going on? Good grief! Yeah, and and he said at first that sort of took him aback, but then, but then it actually provided some relief for him. You know, he, that he didn't he, have to talk about it. Yeah, he was able to kind of stay contained within himself as he made that long journey home. Yeah. No, that's that's extraordinary. It really uh, is. What, 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 tell us what, what what are you working on next? Do you have uh, do you have something that that you're uh, that you're excited about is, that's new? Well, I, I, I'm sort of I'm sort of old fashioned and superstitious about this. Ah, uh, don't <laughs> so, blame so you. So am I. I'm here. I am asking you. this. I know. Uh, we got to take a shot, though. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> well, I, 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 it, it, it's it's um. 
after working on uh, Coldest Night and Far Bright Star, I think I think that um, and the Coldest Night, which is set in the 1950s, the early 1950s, I think that I, I, I feel a little bit like Rip Van Winkle, having woken up and uh, uh, looking around myself and not really <laughs> not really understanding the world all that much. I will say uh, what I'm working on now will be. Uh, sat securely in the 19th century. Ah. Okay, wow. Well, well we, we look we, forward to we it. We do. We're, it's it's <laughs> time for us to go. Uh, thank you so much, I, uh, Robert Olmsted. I, I saw one of the reviewers said this is prize worthy, and and we certainly think so. So too. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank I'm Mark Mustin with Diane Roberts here on Furious Fiction. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>